So now that you've seen the first part, uh, the first part one of our two-part series on in multi-unit investment property in Baltimore City, we now actually had the pleasure of myself, Chris Haskins, and the buyer, the buyer of this deal. So we, the three of us, decided this was not an ideal project or ideal investment for us. But we did get in contact with the person who won the bid, and we were able to sit down with him and kind of go over his numbers and compare them with our initial ideas of what we wanted to do with this property. So let's cut to the video where we sat down with JT, who's the buyer, where he can further explain his strategy to make this deal work for him. units you are quite interesting stuff quite interesting this is stuff you you was doing back in the day Dan in Brooklyn yeah this is actually I gotta tell you Chris man this stuff excites me man so I'll give you an example right um, what I would do here you would um, finish taking down this wall, like you're gonna break it down to the brick, and this is strucolite. This is dusty. Strucolite's more of a cement. Mm -hmm. um, that's another way you know it's pre-wall construction, and you know by the laughs because you would need the laughs to catch the strucolite, mm -hmm. right? And it was all by hand. So you can would you just paint the brick. No, well you can, but I would rip this. I would finish just taking down the strucolite and mm -hmm. acid wash the brick, mm -hmm. brick point it, and it gives it that that authentic look yeah, and it, it saves a lot of money on future painting, uh, future maintenance. This is crazy. Uh, one of the things I would do is get the electrical company to move all this, these meters outside so the tenants don't have to be home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we don't even have the uh, meters inside in, in Virginia. They're but you could see this, now this floor is slanting, so there's an issue with the foundation. It may not be the foundation, it just may be the, the beams below. Yeah. But like I said, uh, the owner we just spoke to, he said 30 grand per unit. Just, no way. No way is it 30 grand per no unit. Unless, unless you do a lot of the work yourself. Uh, but you're at crazy. that point, you're buying yourself a job, man. But then, Dan, how, if you do the work yourself, how many months are you going to be in here? These 10 units, again, it all depends on the crew that you could get in to come in and make it happen, right? No, I'm talking about if you do the stuff yourself. Like yeah, you it, it makes no sense for guys like you and I to do it because while we're doing this, we're losing money on opportunities. Heck yeah. This is so nasty. Oh my lord. At least I like this in the bedroom. It's, it's a small bedroom. Look at this, yo. Chris, I'll tell you the truth, man. You, to, to buy this right, this is a 20 grand a piece. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. You gotta give this to me, right? Yeah. You gotta give it to me. This this would be 20,000 a piece. I would Because the numbers don't make sense based on the rent roll. Mm -mm. But you know what? You don't notice unless you actually come out here. And then when you come out here, no oh, man, Chris Birch. Chris <laughs> Birch. What's happening? Chris Birch, introduce yourself, Chris. What's up, guys? Chris Birch <laughs> here in uh, Baltimore. 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 How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I didn't know he was gonna be able to make it. Four hours on the highway. Poor thing. Is that me or you? Huh? Who's low battery? Is that me? It's, I think it's the uh, fire alarm. Yeah, it sounds like the um, smoke detector. Yeah. We were wondering when you're going to get here, Chris. Man, I've been this moving. Is <laughs> this is something. See, my wife doesn't even want to come inside. It's the exciting one. So that was the one that needs Reno. Now let's go on the one that the gentleman said he renovated. So, Ann, tell us about this one, Ann. You already wanted this one? This one was totally gone. So you've got new drywall, you've got, you know, new trim, new floors, new tile, new, yes, the narrow. Um, small, but cozy. And this is where I'd like to put the view. Well, Andrew, you do live in a 3,000 square foot house, though. I, I got a preference. And so let me ask you, will the you VA and Section 8 allow these stairs so narrow? Yeah, they're grand grandfathered. They're all grandfathered in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, it's not, it's not, they don't have to meet new codes? No, it really depends if, if the VA, if the gentleman but there has is, to be uh, a you know, in a wheelchair or something like that. Consider but the this VA inspector a step will come meet from me where here they are. in yeah, a sense, and I've never had trouble with yeah. the stairs. Dave, cool. this is a step up for somebody, no doubt. 
Oh, without a doubt. They might, they might ask for a railing. Yeah. yeah so ask, I was just. Will ask for railing. Yeah. Section eight will ask. Yeah. Make sure the windows are between code. Yeah. Make sure they can lock. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm, so I, it just stairs is what really concerns crazy. me because I don't. They definitely don't meet code. I'm so scared. Uh, well, but you're saying they can grandfather them in. Yeah. I mean, so this is another downstairs. All the houses oh, the old city to change. Yeah. You see I mean, think about the ones with the circular they have, stairs. Uh, it's horrible. PVC so in New York, they actually make you change them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you depending on if you depending on the extent of the renovation, if you know if you want to do a full gut, they're going to make you change the whole entire thing, which also means it takes away the square footage right. because you got to put in the bigger stairs and then you have to redesign the whole place. Come on, there. Yeah. This man, looks I wouldn't nice, make man. it. I wouldn't make it, dude. This is a one bedroom. I'd have broke my. I would have broke my hip coming down this joint. This is a one what bedroom. What about you, Dan? Dan, I'm listening. What about you? I wouldn't make it on those stairs. <laughs> I mean, so you see what they did? This is a perfect example. Th that th one we just looked at. That was a railroad. Basically, what they did here was they just made when you come to this top top landing an area mm -hmm. and they put doors on each side That's so they crazy. lessen the space of the bedrooms right but in here it's a one bedroom man this is crazy you did a good job here with the amount of space they have they should have went with a smaller sink but yeah they probably got it though on sale yeah so this, really so this is the deal with this man chris you know we I, I, when you when you were with your wife mm -hmm. setting that up i was talking to to the owner, mm -hmm. he's he's really looking at around four twenty. Four twenty. And he's yeah. he's estimating thirty thousand. I suspect there's more. Way more than that, bro. So that brings you at a hundred. The market is gonna be about a hundred and five. There's not Each. enough room. Yeah, not in this. Not even on a Stairs. long term. Mm -mm. But hey man, you look and you go, right? You but you know what? You learn. Yeah. We meet Anne, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, to Damn, to me, this is going to require a specialized skill to be able to turn these around. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, this is not something. I, this is not something you would get into if you don't rehab. if you don't have uh, experience. You talking um, about floors out of square? Damn. Not only that, but out of square. Not only that, but um, every penny is going to count at based on the acquisition cost. If you don't bring in your construction cost at the right number, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're finished. But I'm just talking about, Dan, your mind, when you see this, is not the typical mind of an average investor that's looking at this. I mean, this is, I, I could see so many unknowns there. I gotta be honest with you, it really, it really isn't. The, no? The floors, the problem is they have really good footings. Uh, but the spacing in between the two by sixes is too wide. There should be 16, 16 spaces. But they're, yeah, but they're more like 24. Okay. So you're going to have to re-support. And then on the top, you just use three-quarter inch ply, and that'll really tie it in together. But even the guys you're using, Dan, you can't use a regular guy. No, you, no need, you, need, to, you need to bring in your <laughs> guys that know what they're doing. Dude, dude, round up, what I'm telling you is if I were to bring my guys here, they... I would lose my shirt because they don't know how to turn this stuff around. They're not turning this small space, these small spaces, stairs, you know, little things. Then they wouldn't even know how to cut them. You know, no. They wouldn't even know how to make it fit. This dude is. This is, certain, this is. Any contractor would need experience with city work. Yeah. On this. Thanks, man. Which is. I, yes, I got to be honest with you, man. This, I love this, 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 this particular project. All right, Roundup, so you've seen the property. So now let's get to some of the backstory. You are actually going to be in the presence of the buyer right now. Also, you're going to get to uh, hear from Daniel and Chris, the thoughts on that property, and just kind of how we wrap this thing up, hanging out in Baltimore. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Jordan, Daniel, Chris, what up? Yeah. Hey, what's, what's going evening? on? What's going on? Nice to see you all got you guys again. Yeah, yeah. So uh, before we get into, I know we got so much to talk about. Dan, you were saying you are you've been in here a little a little a, a lot longer than all of us. You were saying bigger is not always better, and then we'll get to this thing. Yeah. Um, I guess you want me to elaborate on that. So I've always said bigger doesn't mean better. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people continuously um leverage 
to go buy other properties. Uh, they leverage properties that they currently have. And that's great. I don't have a problem with that. I've actually done it myself. You don't want to over leverage yourself, right? And you get into the hype and you, you start, you know, when everything's going well, it's it's dandy, right? It's easy, right? And then as soon as, the you know, a situation like Corona, let's even forget the COVID virus out of it. Let's take that out of the picture. Any downturn, whether for whatever that reason may be, um, that's where you really see the ramifications of over leveraging. So guys, I could, the only thing I could always say to people is, you know, it's good to leverage. Don't over leverage. You got to do it at a price point that you're comfortable with. Um, could I have grown faster, you know, before 2008? Absolutely. But I didn't suffer during two, after 2008 or during 2008, we didn't lose one property. Um, you know, I didn't change my lifestyle. Everything continued as normal because I wasn't over leveraged. Right. And actually, I was in a position to take advantage of all of properties as a result of everyone having everyone else being over leveraged. Yeah. So, you know, when everyone else was telling me I was nuts and I didn't feel comfortable with it, I was like, all right, you do you and I'll do me. And, you know, it wasn't that I was smarter than everybody else. It was just me, my personality. Right. Mm -hmm. So having said that, you know, great. It bigger it is better to a certain point. As long as you could handle it without, you know, over leveraging is, is yeah. what my point is. I, I agree with that. So uh, <clears throat> let's get into this. We we went to the property, walked it, saw the condition of all of them, 10 units. So I would like to just go ahead and start with Jordan. I want to know before we talk about the acquisition and all the numbers and all that stuff, what were you thinking as you were walking it? And I want to hear everybody's opinion on just gut how those properties made them feel because uh real estate's a lot about the way it feels when you walk through people want to they want to feel warm and fuzzy thanks for joining us uh gentlemen hey no problem no problem yeah i mean my my gut reaction when i went in um you know it was it was a little bit i was like oh man these i wanted them to to be a little bit better you know you always want them to, to have a you know just like all right i can just do a little bit to it and you know we'll be good to go um, but you know, as I was walking through it, I saw some of the renovated ones, uh, the one that we looked at, uh, which was completely finished. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there were the other ones that, you know, needed work. And I was like, okay, look, if they're going to need work, go ahead, full gut. Um, yeah. with doing the full gut, because those, like you saw them, they weren't like huge square footages, um, mm -hmm. super tight quarters. And so, you know, I was like, look potentially down the road because of the location, you know, we definitely have something that we can work with. So if we go ahead and, you know, we can make this, you know, turn it around real quick, um, get some people in there, start getting some cash flows going. Uh, there definitely is so much more potential for, uh, cause I, you know, thought about doing maybe some expansion later on down the line. Um, wow. cause I ran some of the numbers and the numbers actually look really good for, uh, for some of the comps in that area. So if you took a look at some of the comps, some of the comps for, uh, similar square footage, maybe about an extra two, 250 square foot, uh, we're going in the one eighties to two hundreds. Um, and so at about 30 to 50 per unit, um, you know, and we were saying maybe, 40, 45 would probably cover that kind of square footage for renovation. So you ended at about 80, 95. For rent um, ready, rent ready. Right. So to, you know, <clears throat> rent ready. And then you probably want to put a little bit of icing on top because for the comps that we were looking at, those ones were a little bit higher end. Um, so with a little bit of a, a better finish. So, you know, depending on who you want to, what type of, what customer type you want to appeal to. Um, that's the type of tenant that you want to get. You want to get long term, and then somebody that's going to be looking to pay a, a higher price point just for the location uh, to be a little bit closer to the city. Because you take the left turn on Pratt Street, and maybe about two blocks, you know, right past University of Baltimore, and you're in the heart of the Inner Harbor. Um, that was crazy. You know, I saw that. I mean, it's almost walking distance to the Orioles Stadium. You know, it might be a little bit of a of a hike, but um, you know, for an Uber. And maybe less than like a three or four minute Uber ride. I've got a property that is uh, on the other side of the bridge over closer to Harbor Hospital. And I was doing Airbnb for that. Uh, a lot of people were coming just to go watch the Orioles games. And that was maybe about a five or 10 minute Uber ride. And, you know, I was charging, I was probably close to about 
you know, top 75 percentile, 85 percentile of the Airbnb market. So for me, you know, looking at that, I was like, for sure, you know, the, yeah. yes. the you know, proximity to, like I said, the hospitals to downtown. I don't think that, you know, it'll, it'll have any issues renting. You know, most of most of it was, you know, how much can we get away with on, you know, the renovation uh, renovation yeah. side of it. Dan, what was your gut saying as you were looking? Have you seen a million of these uh, being I, in the I actually, market? The pro- properties like that excite me, right? Because um, uh, I, I, I walk into a property like that, I already, I'm already envisioning what it's going to look like when I'm done, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I came in with my numbers between 45 and 50, um, dressing them up a little bit more, about 55. Um, but I didn't come up with the comps that you came up with, Jordan. My comps mm-hmm. were... Um, actually, Chris and I discussed those comps between 95 to 110. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and that 200 square foot addition makes a huge difference when, right. because of the layout in that particular prop in those apartments, they were very, uh, especially with those stairs going up to the second floor. Mm-hmm. So, does that concern you, Dan and JT? It, it, it concerned me, especially if we, if you wanted to rent to uh, any type of uh, rent Government. subsidy type of program. Mm-hmm. I'm, I wasn't really sure if that would pass, to be honest with you. It, oh. it likely is is not because they the restrictions are you know a little bit tighter. Uh, there's a decent amount of, of Section Eight uh, in that area as well. So you know what you're comparing it to and what their requirements are. Um, you know, if I was looking to go that route, I definitely you know wasn't going to be doing those specifically. Uh, you know those those ones specifically. I think the um, the one that was renovated even had a super tight uh, uh super tight stairway as well so a lot of that would have had to have been rearranged yeah so that was that was my concern and chris we we all spoke about that where to do those stairs the right way you're going to lose at least another 100 square feet mm-hmm. um and 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 in such a tight space that was that in each one of those units were that's a lot of space to lose right um so that's why we we didn't we weren't willing to go up. I mean, I wasn't willing to go up on my numbers uh, precisely because that because th- I, w- I would have wanted to dress them up not to have to deal with Section 8 because primarily because of the size of each unit mm. and and not having on street parking. It was all off street parking. So that's uh that in my opinion, your idea going for uh, an upper scale uh, tenant that that would work great. Uh, but you're gonna have to dress them up more than fifty grand per unit. Mm. Birch, what, you, what was your gut saying? You're from DC, so you've got a little more uh, f- uh, yeah feel on that stuff too. Well, I mean, Jordan would probably agree with me. The difference between some areas of Baltimore and Washington DC are between night and day. Yes, and there's areas east yes. of east of the harbor that are in Baltimore that are night and day difference between the West side. So, I mean, there's that vast difference. And, you know, I thought it was kind of cool that the, the whole reason why the four of us are now doing this is that I shared it with Dan. I shared it with Chris that, look, there's this 10 unit auction coming up. I've talked to the auction house and that's the whole reason we all got there. Cause we were like 10 units for, you know, starting bid, you know, it was low. Chris mentioned it, it was like 150 was the starting bid. Oh yeah. Um, and I, I spoke to I spoke to the auction house the week before, and kind of went through the numbers with her. Of course, she can't disclose the number, but I asked, "Would X amount buy it? Would two hundred buy it?" She said, "No." Would two fifty buy it? No. Um, and where she didn't agree with me, but she felt comfortable saying that I was very very close, is still, I think you know, Dan and I discussed probably about ninety thousand dollars above where we. Th- thought they were going to sell it for yeah based on talking mm-hmm. with her um but so you asked my initial reaction um the guy who owned it he was an investor obviously he didn't buy it that long ago yeah um, i pulled it up i don't think i don't think he fixed anything per se on the exterior he painted it so it looked yep. it looked, it looked it. presentable right um going inside of course you already mentioned the ones that have been renovated were renovated on the cheap. Um, you know, the appliances, the finishes, it was just a, as simple as could be. Um, I did hear him mention, I think I think Chris or Dan actually mentioned in the first video that he said his strategy was government subsidized income for these properties. 
but mm -hmm. I do, as well as all of you guys, question if any of these would ever even pass in the current floor plan that right. they're in. You know. So, uh, Jordan, let's get into the numbers on this thing. <clears throat> Tell me how what, what your minds do you have like a cash flow number you're looking? Are you first of all, what is your exit strategy? Are you holding on to these or are you planning to fix them up to sell them? Uh, so this is actually uh, is going to be a hold for me um, hold. based on the area uh, and based on the like I said, the proximity to uh, some of the, you know, the uh, the features of the city. Um, and with the growth, uh, they actually had a couple projects uh, maybe about two or three years ago um, over close to the University of Baltimore that are relatively new uh, that have brought people over to towards that west side. So, you know, a little bit north uh, northwest of Pigtown. And again, Pigtown is has actually been changing uh, relatively quickly. Uh, in my opinion, so but what is um, Pigtown for? I don't have. Chris, that's that? that's where that's the some of the properties that I own in the city where you actually live. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a, a uh, challenged area, kind of a depressed area. It's a, How long? It's, a, it's a block or two over from brand new development. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and and it's continuing to move westward, but south of the south of the train tracks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, good. Yeah, and not you know I don't, I don't necessarily bank a lot on appreciation, so that's usually yeah. the last part of my equation. Uh, really, is looking to make any of the overall improvements as long as I can be within. Usually, I'm, I'm looking for about uh, twelve percent as as far as uh, as cap rate. You know, for this one, it's probably going to be a little bit lower than that, um, just because of the amount that's going to take for you know as far as renovations. And so, because this is definitely a, a longer term play. Um, you know, doing the doing the repairs and like I said, upscaling it to draw in that that higher quality uh, tenant. You know, I can actually limit my turnover, um, limiting that turnover, and then in addition to that, there's a couple additional profit centers because I know I was talking to you guys about uh, solar before. That's actually you know my background. Um, being able to include a solar array on that entire uh, block. Wow. Um, would actually be able to increase that profit, uh, increase a profit center. I'd be able to get, uh, it's about a two, two year cut, uh, cut down on the return, um, just from being able to produce excess power and then have the power that the tenants are paying directly to me, uh, as a landlord. So with the, uh, the energy efficiency wow. upgrades, uh, cause that's, that's really where a lot of, um, a lot of people end up, you know, going wrong is that when you're building, you know, not building with high quality actually costs you more money. That's um, true. Long when, run. Right. When you're building Absolutely. with higher quality, more durable materials yes. and things that are, um, you know, really tenant proof uh, and nothing's tenant proof, but, you know, the better you can build it, the, the less likely you are to have to go and do the repairs, do the refinishings. Um, and then again, you'll 100%. also have a happier tenant as well. So with all those things, it actually cuts down and I mean, it increases overall profit just from the sake of, you know, limiting your exposure to, oh, my boiler's going up again. You know, let me go ahead and go put a, a cheap two or $3,000 boiler in there. And then it's going to go up in the next five years again. Um, because the tenants, when you're not there, you know, there's not theirs. They're not paying for it. It's going to be abused. And so if you don't have something that can withstand the, you know, the highs and lows of, you know, tenants. Um, and, you know, I take a lot of my experience from, I, I did a lot of handyman work when I was in college. Uh, so anytime there was a party, it was a rager, you know, somebody bust a hole in a wall. Oh man, uh, it, go, call Jordan, call Jordan, you know, come, come fix it. And seeing the way in which, you know, college kids treat things, being able to circumvent any of the damages and prevent the abuse that you can, uh, you know, you can be exposed to with tenants when you can cut down on that. It saves you a ton of money on the long term. And then as far as your energy, I include the energy bills into the rents. So if I'm using energy efficient features now, I'm actually making a margin that Delta on what I'm making on the utilities is goes directly to me. And now, you know, tenants can feel free to to 
you know, turn on that faucet and I've got, you know, low flow, uh, low flow faucet heads. Um, you have the, 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 the conservation, um, the conserva uh, conservation, the toilets, the ones with the, the dual flush system, um, you know, LED bulbs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then also as far as insulation, that's about 30 to 40% of overall energy consumption in, in the United uh, U.S. homes. It comes from heating and cooling. And so when you're um, insulating, you know, you're doing all right, your standards are 15s. But if you're doing R20s, R30s, it may come at a cost. But again, that's insulation that you won't have to do really un until you're, you're rebuilding that wall again. And so when you cut down on all that turnover and you're um, you're controlling the humidity and the um, and the airflow that comes in and out of the home, you're cutting down on that turnover time, uh, you know, overall heat uh, heat exchange and um, and reducing your overall energy expense. And those are, you know, have been steadily creeping up over the years. So if you if you're putting the solar on there, you're sucking up the power bills. Is that, I want to make sure I'm getting a clear picture of that. If also for my viewers, I'm envisioning you're having the solar panels there. That you that's a that's a set you have, and you're passing that on. I mean your your tenants moving in, they don't have a power bill. Correct. That power. So how so do that, you? My question. I got. I just got to ask one more question on that, Chris. When you explain that to Chris, please explain how you have a separate meter, or how do you figure out the usage per tenant? Uh, so with each tenant will still register with the utility. So they still register with bg and &E. There is a certain amount that they're allocated every month that's covered. That's covered in their rent. Anything in excess is actually paid to bg and &E. So now for me as the owner, let's say if I know I'm covering baseline $200 and that month they use 250. So I've already made my margin within that $200 in that extra 50, they would end up paying to bg and &E. Now, if I want right and now typically because if you're talking about 10 units somebody's going to use less somebody's going to use a little bit more and it nets out you do historical uh usage over the past um and you can pull the the, the data from bg and e for any um landlord they'll let you get data as far back as they have it on that uh that property and um if you look at the trends you look at what the trajectory is for overall consumption for that year uh, average home is, you know, for those are smaller homes, maybe about uh, 10,000 kilowatts per year. For those size, maybe about 7,500 uh, kilowatts a year. And you size the system, maybe within about 10%, bg and &E throws a fit if you try to oversize the system. Um, but you want to do it to the maximum total consumption for that year. And then, like I said, you reduce the amount of ability they have to consume. So all the appliances are, you know, you increase your amount of energy efficiency to uh, further lower that threshold that they would pass. Um, and then that is just how you control somebody uh, over consuming uh, or not being able to provide enough for, for that, um, for that, you know, single unit. And like I said, they're still all separately metered. So it doesn't necessarily make a difference to me because BG and E credits me that same, uh, let's call it, 70,000 kilowatts per year for that system and anything in excess that's over that's consumed is either um, paid for by the they tenant yeah. or if they use under they actually send a credit back to the owner of that system and this is aside from any of the subsidies that are received so uh chris if you're in dc any homeowner especially a business owner that is not in uh installing solar they are missing out right now. It is a 26% federal tax credit. Uh, so on the total cost of the system, it would be less, you know, say a $30,000 system. You're getting 26% dollar for dollar uh, federal tax credit uh, whenever you're going to, to do your taxes. And depending on which state you live in, which is why I was up in Jersey, Jersey has some awesome, uh, they're called SREX, Solar Renewable Energy Credits. Um, DCs, I think, is I think they're floating. Are you guys at about 240, 250 right now? At a time you guys were at about four hundred. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Because I mean, in DC, we're doing the whole green renewable. So they're actually, you can actually not only do the solar, you can actually do a green roof on your property, and you're getting like an additional ten to fifteen percent 
on your tax savings as well. Yeah, it's nice. everything that's involved in the process of installing the solar, it gets that that tax credit applied. Yep. And then there are, like I said, the, the solar renewable energy credits. Let's say you have a 10 kilowatt system, you're generating 10 credits for the year. If you're at 250 bucks, that's 2,500 bucks every year. Jersey's expires after 15 years. Uh, I believe in DC, theirs is for the life of the system. Um, okay. So you know, now you're talking about lifetime production. That system typically will pay itself off and um, they're closing in on about seven, eight years now. Some of that, those timelines have been going down depending on the price of the system and the installer. Um, but then also, if you're talking about a commercial purchase, uh, you know, anything that is financed through a business, you also get accelerated depreciation. And so within five years, you can write off the total cost of that system and you get all the tax credits, you get all the SRECs, and then any overproduction of those systems goes to you as the owner. And, you know, nice. just like real estate, you have so many different deductions that you can get against the income that you're getting. It, it makes it a lot easier to make those numbers work out the way you need them. You sound real knowledgeable on that stuff, man. It's just, I'm glad to be just make my viewers aware. I need to reconsider my thought process on that stuff too. So cash flow, let's talk about your cash flow. Do you have a per unit that you're looking for? Because you're coming in on this thing from my notes here. There are only three, three units occupied on that 10 unit, which you're, so basically you have to be aware of what you're walking into, Jordan. Tell me your thoughts on, uh, on that now, as opposed to where you want to take it. Right. So right now, I think the the rents they were bringing in was at seven hundred and fifty bucks. Seven fifty, yeah. Um. So, but that you, is, let, let, let me yeah. ask you guys before you said, do you do you not believe that's below market? I, I was looking at a hundred to two hundred bucks below market. Yeah, I, I would I would say it's it's slightly below market. Um, but I also think that because uh, I actually talked to one of the tenants and he had just moved in. Mm -hmm. So I think that they were um, maybe in a rush to get him in there or they had discounted the prices uh, because the specific unit that they were in was actually, you know, wasn't a, a whole lot uh, going on with that one. So, you know, I, I did want to ask some more questions about that. So what, what, right now, are you I mean, you, your mind, you have a whole I mean, I cannot imagine how much value that you plan to bring to it. You're walking into it with three units rented. Would tell me your thought process. Do you, is there a dollar amount of cash flow you want on each one? What I just want to kind of see. What is? Tell me where you're at regarding turning them, getting them rented. Um. So as far as getting them rented, uh, so the the current ones that are rented are we're going to be looking to do you know a, a small bump on those. Mm -hmm. Um, but ideally I always like to do renovations prior to, you know, so I can justify the rental increases. You know, yeah. I don't like just jumping up rents on people just because I'm a new landlord coming in. That never spells, you know, great relationship. Between yeah, it's the not, it's and not the a landlord. good way to start your relationship. No. Right. Right. So, um, you know, what really you, go ahead. What do you think you can get over there, Jordan? Are, are you, will you keep them two bedrooms? So actually with the market, uh, checked a few of the rentals. Um, they were anywhere from um, 11 to 14. Uh, wow. I've seen a, a couple that were 16, but those were some of the larger um, larger two uh, two and three bedrooms. Uh, so those ones were getting above that, that 16 Holy range. Cow. And so if you're and if I'm adding that much square footage on enough to be able to get an extra bedroom in there, that's what we were looking at. But, you know, as far as whenever I run my numbers, I'm looking to be more conservative. So, um, you so know, Jordan, from that, just, just a quick question before you say that. So you're you're comparing that to to at least units that are two to three hundred more square feet. So were you looking to add to the bump out in the back if there was room? What, what were you looking to do to add that additional value to justify that rent that the rent that you're stating? Uh, so it was going to be the bump out in the back. Um, from what I was looking at, it was a couple that looked like they they potentially may need new roofs. Um, and during the um, this uh, the process that I'm going through, walking and checking, any of the ones that need any of the structural work, those were going to be the ones that I was going to try out, uh, to try out first. I'm actually doing a um, a level up 
I'm actually working, uh, Chris, around you in DC um, on a project now. We're adding uh, it's an additional 700 square foot on a property in L Street. If that one goes as planned, um, then I may actually consider doing that over here as well and adding a, uh, an additional level. So um, your numbers, yeah, but your numbers, okay. A, so I'm a little confused, man, and I'm just trying to figure out because your numbers are not coming in in line with ours, and I, not to say that yours is wrong or mine is right. I, I would, I'm going to trust your judgment because you you have a lot more knowledge in the area. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I'm going to ask you these questions. Gotcha. So essentially, you're not looking at forty five thousand dollars a unit anymore. You're looking at bumping it up to close to a hundred thousand. If you're looking to do that bump out, yeah, that ain't oh, cheap. oh, yeah, 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 for for sure, and that's why I was considering, um, you know, just doing the interior renovation prior to. So there was going to be a portion that I'm reserving for doing those bump outs, uh, and that was going to be actually something I was going to do over time, as opposed to just you know, you know, going all going in hard just to make sure that those rents can justify. Because right now, you know, as far as the time that we're in. You know, not too confident and I'm not trying to, to time the market or, or, you know, make future predictions. Um, so as quickly as we can get some people in there uh, and, and we can get everything dressed up, uh, then we can start talking about doing, um, you know, doing some of the additional uh, square footage. Look, I, I personally believe it's a great spot if you want to dress up those units, rearrange those stairs, make them up to code. Um, and get in, get in, and, and do everything you said because that's actually primarily how I run my business. Um, mm -hmm. I don't go cheap on anything. Actually, Chris has visited a couple of my job sites when he was in New York, and he could tell you, you know, I don't go anything less than five eighths on sheetrock. Everything is LEDs. You know, um, the most efficient appliances. All of my units tenants pay their own heat, hot water, electric, um, and as long whatever the walls will permit me to go is what I'll go as far as. Um, our ratings, whether it be it's never less than R19, because in New York and just like in Baltimore, you have really two, you have real two by fours, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that allows you to go to the R20 sometimes a little higher. Um, but because so everything you said, I agree with you with, right? You you know my average tenancy in areas like Fort Green, Brooklyn, where it's about eighteen months, uh, thirteen to eighteen months, my average tenancy is twelve years, um, and oh. it's not be, it's not because I'm discounting my rent because my rents keep up with the market. Actually, sometimes they go a little higher, but I provide a service, right? Um, so, and you know, my tenants call me within 24 hours. There's somebody at their door to make that repair. Assuming mm -hmm. it's not on a Sunday. If it's on a Sunday and it's an emergency within two hours, there's someone at that door, right? So, so I agree with everything you said. I just don't understand where, where you're coming out with your numbers. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, so I, I hear you what you're saying with with, with, with the energy consumption and making uh, uh, adding uh, revenue by in that end, but where else can you make up that difference to justify that twelve to thirteen cap rate? Is what I'm asking. Uh, so with uh, with those rents, the rents are you you still counting it at? Well, what are you pricing the rents at? We were pricing them at around eleven hundred. Okay. Because and of the so, square foot, oh, because of the square footage, there's no parking on the street. Um, it, you know, there's a good and bad to that, right? Because now mm -hmm. it, the way I I envision that is if you dress up the the, the units, um, and you and you specifically target a, a specific market that enjoys being in, in a little cul-de-sac type of atmosphere. You put some flower pots out. You clean up the entire street, whether it's your property or not. You clean it up. Um, and it becomes a, 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 an enclosed community, right? Mm -hmm. People are willing to pay extra for that and, and put aside the inconvenience of parking your car two blocks down the road, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, But I still don't have those numbers, right? That's what I'm trying to figure out for you. Chris, do you, do you see where I'm coming from? Either one of you, Chris's? Yeah. No, well, I, I want to follow. Go ahead, go ahead Chris. No, I, I actually, I, I somewhat agree with your questions and not being critical at all but even even on for me even on a long-term scope if you're talking about doing bump outs you're going to drastically affect your cap rate at the same time mm -hmm. you're now further investing 
into that, hoping that that's going to come back around. Um, I think that immediate neighborhood, you know, that um, Union Square is basically the, the the neighborhood that that property is in. Um, it had it leaves a lot to be desired, but there's so much potential. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan mentioned in in the earlier video, you're not going to find that architecture all over the city. A right. lot of that architecture has either been burnt up or or torn down, deleted. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> I guess my long term question would be: at at what point can you get the properties to the eleven hundred dollars a month? You know, between now and when, and I and it, in our time today, it's an uncertain thing. So I don't question. Mm -hmm that today but what is it going to take you to get those properties to that condition and over what time period are you going to start to see some sort of residual return um and so i, I think that a lot of it has to do um and like i was saying because with for me the solar becomes the the strategic part of the uh the investment just okay. to be able to say if for the three properties uh, that were on the the very what is that the the very right side, uh, mm -hmm. being able to start on those uh, within this year and get them all new roofs with wow. the roofs and those bump outs, the roof uh, to down to the deck qualify for the ITC. So any yeah. of that bump out, it, uh, at least about forty percent of that is covered by that ITC. So that's the part that does become uh, a, a bit of a benefit. There's a, a savings on doing those bump outs. Um, and if those are, you know, actually necessary to do, even if they aren't necessary to do, those can actually be baked in on as far as like the long term numbers go. Uh, so let's say if, um, you know, within the, the next two years, I can actually get the remainder of um, the remainder of the units done. Uh, including the roofs, including the solar systems uh, with the additional square footage. Um, and if I'm going to be putting the structures up for the panels themselves, then they actually get to get rooftop uh, decks, like um, wow. not, nece not necessarily uh, anything nice. that's like large scale, uh, but with building onto flat roofs um, and, you know, the, the study has to be done for the, um, like the structural has to be done. Uh, if those are, uh, you know, without any like uh, the, the height restrictions, cause they're only two floors, cause that's typically what you'll run into is after you get above uh, three stories, um, there actually are, are height restrictions and it becomes a lot more expensive. But if we keep it at two floors um, and we can take the tops off and get the, the at least a 20% tax credit on redoing the um, the roof and the uh, well the roof for the bump outs those actually cover a lot of the costs uh, that you know you wouldn't you would have to see at least about a two or three year return um, that's actually getting subsidized uh, with the uh, install of the solar system and so I, I'm trying just, to pull up my just, spreadsheet just now for the for the audience could you explain what the ITC is uh, the ITC is the investment tax credit so. If I, as a, um, an owner or business owner, want to go and get solar, if I need to be able to redo my roof to make it structurally stable to get a solar system, then the federal government gives you a, uh, a tax credit on the total cost of that project. So, you know, a $30,000 typical solar system, um, you know, installed by you know, an, an accredited installer. Um, that is just for the hardware and for the installation itself. Um, but if Do they, they give go, you the tax, is the tax credit also including bringing down the roof to the deck and building it back up or just for the equipment itself? Right. It's down to the deck. So anything that is further than the deck is not included. So, um, in other words, so I mean, the well, deck, any, re any, any replacement of beams, um, the torch down roof, the, whatever that entails, including the equipment is for it. That's where you get your tax credit from the 40%. Correct. So if you need, even if you just need to shore up the roof and, you know, add a couple, um, couple six buys, those are also included in the tax credit. See that now this is starting to make sense. Yeah. 
It's starting to make sense now. I don't think he's just buying based on okay, no ROI, right? Cap break. Right. I think you have a whole lot of stuff going on here, Jordan, and that's I think we're interested in learning that from yeah. you young guys. Yes. And you're, it's almost like you're playing a chess. You're matching profit with uh, with the with some of your tax credits and other th- mm-hmm. other other uh, profit centers that you're adding onto these, which is admirable in my opinion. Yeah, listen, it's I, that's something I've always done in my properties, um, where I I'll go in and I'll bring in, you know. I first thing I do is change all the common areas to LEDs. Um, I put in um, I put in cages in the basements. Assuming the property allows me to do that, so now I create another hundred dollars per unit because they always rent that storage space in the basement. Mm-hmm. And then I also put in you know uh, depending on the size of the property, you know the washing machine, the dryers, and that's another source of of revenue, right? But you're taking it to a whole different atmosphere, right? Would you not say? Would you, wouldn't you agree, Chris? Yep. Yeah. Right. It's real. It's, I'm. I, I commend you, man. It's yep. really interesting. Thank you for sharing so, that with us. Get to your ROI. Um, not no, ROI. Right. I got my notes here. Uh, do you have? Oh, yeah, financing. That's right. I want to talk to you about your financing. Are you a cash guy, or do you have a debt service on these things, JT? I don't want to push you too hard on what you want to talk about. Uh, no, no, it's it's not a problem. Uh, so I, I I will I've anticipated for debt service. Uh, so I already have a, a couple lenders um, that I've you know worked with in the past. I have been looking to source for some different lenders that actually do more of you know do more of the community involvement. Um, but ideally, uh, I'm actually looking to bring in some other investors that I've worked with. Some of them up in uh, in New Jersey. Um, and then also right. some of my, my family members uh, to be able to actually get in on this so that if we're, you know, counting, paying an interest to someone, then it should be kept with, you know, within our community, within our, our local environment. Uh, you. So, you know, just as far as it. the initial it. bridge, you know, we got the traditional stuff. But, you know, I, I look at it as something where if if you're investing in the, to the community, and you know my family members have been here for you know 40 and 50 years plus so you know i want to give them opportunities to be able to you know own a part of this and to continue this on in a perpetuity uh you know because that's something i'm really about is generational wealth um you know it's about legacy building and so being able to give that to a you know a bank they don't give the same type of of love they you know necessarily care about what's going on in the community they're just looking at the bottom line and where you can say well hey look i've got people who are have been here who know what's going on they see the potential um and they want to see you know everybody in this community do well uh you know that's those are the people that i want to you know have involved in this project as a you know as opposed private to money private right, money right. got it yeah it, it yeah you know it makes me feel good, so good to hear a young man like yourself speaking like that, and, and and actually out there doing it. That's what really makes a difference, right? You're not you're not you're not saying it; you're doing it, man. Congratulations, good for you. Thanks, so I got to uh, let me ask you about. I was brainstorming: is condo conversion on your radar, or is it even available in that area, uh, Jordan? Do you consider that? Tell me how you uh, your thought process on that. Um. So that's the thing that. I will probably have to say I'm not as familiar with, uh, you know, with changing into condos or looking to do any type of, of structure or setup like that. But, you know, if, if you've seen things in the past that, you know, have worked for you or if you've seen work for other people, I am I'm all ears. Uh, you know, like you, you've seen, I, I try to get as creative as I can, you know, take uh, any any opportunity, you know, whether it be to. Uh, make the quality of living better, make the the actual structure itself better. Um, if you think that that's something that would be ideal for that area, then then for sure I would uh, I'm definitely open to to something like that. I had no idea. I, I, you know, as you're talking about solar and I'm just trying to obviously figure out how to pass value on, you know, just like every other uh, serious entrepreneur just pass the value on to the to the end user I was just, just curious about it that's all having each one of them their own tax parcel that mm-hmm. way you know so um and and i, I so i have i've already actually uh like i said you know being able to bring it back uh my my family you know like i said my my brother my dad uh my uncles my cousins you know we all invest in real estate um, wow and so you know 
being able to give them an opportunity to to get in on this would be able to um, you know we've already spoken to a couple people that are in transitions um, you know some people have already you know it, it expressed interest in in moving in so if it were to be like a, a co-op um, you know where everybody owns an individual piece um, you know structures like that like I said you know, I'm I'm very willing to, to get creative. Um, and if it either empowers other people to get invested in the real estate or to, you know, do deals of their own, um, you know, why, why would I stop that? I, I want more people to, to do this because, you know, for me, it's, it's been very beneficial. So. so let me ask you about those stairs, Jordan. Would you change mm -hmm. that? I, um, I, I was literally and I'm just I want to be transparent with me. My feet were barely fitting on there. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. common up there? I mean, I feel like I would I would personally I know I would end up breaking my back breaking an arm leg something going down the steps if i lived there so a couple of things that you know uh, popped into my mind were um you know i was like all right i could probably go on the cheaper end but if i'm gonna go cheaper you know it's actually got to be something that's worthwhile and i've seen a couple of the um it's a, a particular geometry that will allow more square footage on the step to be more sure when you're using the step, you, uh, when you're climbing the stairs and they actually have them that they are angled. Um, so, and it, it would be a lot easier to be able to show you the, the image of it, but um, you know, I've, I've got it saved in, in my, uh, my ideas and concepts because I am, um, as far as like modular design, I love, I love, love, love efficient, like modular design, uh, being able to take and maximize, you know, a very small space because, you know, in America, we've got so used to living in huge four and 7,000 square foot, you know, homes and stuff like right. that. Um, right. But to be able to maximize a small space uh, so that it feels much larger, you know, you definitely have to get creative with some of those things. Um, or if I were to take that, you know, entire staircase out and then do a, um, the iron spiral staircase, that was also something that I was I was playing around with. Gotcha. That would take up less space, too. I guess it would be compact going straight up. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Good idea. Um, do, um, let me ask you, is that common in Baltimore? That's, that's not common here in the Hampton Roads area, Jordan. Um, I wouldn't say that it's like super common, but I have seen it before. Um, okay. And like you said, you know, uh, Chris was talking about um, is definitely you can see it, it's probably in some of the older properties, um, gotcha. you know, where there is limited either on square footage or somebody who's tried to convert some of the townhomes into multifamilies, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where they have, you know, scaled those down. Uh, but for the most part, not uh, very common from from my experience. Gotcha. Up there. Yeah. I just think it's a little different, different experience up there. Oh, yeah. They were janky. They were, they were a little janky. So. Uh, you think? Are you concerned <laughs> with uh, walking? I know y'all in the first video, we talked about a railroad walking through, like walking through a bedroom to get to a bedroom here. Not happening. Like nobody wants that. You know, mm. I mean, I'm not, a, I can't rent a property like that here in Hampton Road. So mm. yeah. I'm presuming. I mean, I, I just I love the fact that real estate's so different, different places. Are you concerned with that, or does that not cross your radar? Um, so I, I I took a look at that, and I was like, I could probably you know take a hit on this, or you know let's get a little bit more creative. If there are a couple of the units, like I said, these are things uh, some of some trial that I've already done. Um, I actually prefer to be able to have a good enough mix where I'm doing long term and short term. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, short term has taken us a, a small bit of a hit, but okay. we have University of Maryland. Uh, I mean, sorry, University of Baltimore that is there. And I actually have used uh, what is it? I think it's called Furnished Finder. Um, it is for traveling nurses. Um, yeah. And to be able to be within walking distance of the hospital. You know, you're only usually getting a travel nurse. They're usually by themselves. They might have a dog or something like that as companionship. Um, and they'll usually do sometimes six month, nine month terms. Uh, and the uh, they get stipends from um, from, you know, the the, uh, the company that they're with. And for that space, uh, I did a, a partial rental. Uh, so this was like an Airbnb. 
uh, for one bedroom, and that was eighteen hundred dollars uh, for an entire unit. For that entire unit, I'm pretty sure I could probably be starting at eighteen and probably get the full two. Um, and so those, you know, for the ones that were railroads, like I said, if I wasn't going to do the staircase or the modified stairwell, um, you know, if if I have to deal with a railroad, then that was something that I was going to uh, to sure. go ahead and and do for those. Yeah, they're ne- they're less concerned because they won't be staying there for long term. Is that what you're saying? Yep, yep. And for somebody who's uh, solo or uh, you know really more works like a more like a studio, um, you know that's not necessarily a concern because now that's just an office space yep. uh, and then their their bedroom. Yeah. Birch Barrero, y'all got anything else for Jordan? You got all my questions answered. I mean, you got financing, yeah. you got your ROI, cash flow. You're talking about the flow of the property. What you plan on renovating them? That's what I had. Yeah. Well, I'll add one thing not targeted towards Jordan, but Chris, would you in Hampton Roads, would you buy a house without a driveway? Would I buy a house in Hampton Roads? Yes. However, okay. I would be I would get such I mean, they would have to give it to me. It would I mean it would be a <laughs> well, my, my, my point, my point being. I've never, my entire life, I grew up, I was raised in in D.C. I still live in D.C. I have never had off-street parking. Now, I have have been able to park on my street, right? But that's dependent on if the 20 other houses aren't doing something that evening or there's not an activity around the corner of the church. (laughs) To me, it's a more urban environment where people, I mean, Dan will probably tell you, some of his tenants... They don't care about parking because they don't plan on having a car because they're going to jump on the train. Yeah, I would say I would say I would say ninety five percent of my tenants in in the city here don't have vehicles, no. Yeah. Yeah. My my point being is Dan has mentioned before in in previous videos, some of his best real estate is a garage or a parking lot. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So Similar to the D.C. market, the Baltimore market. There's an added value by having a garage or on street parking that even further adds to it. Yeah. yeah. So one of the, one of the places I saw what you could add a lot more value is buying the lot. So according to, to, to the realtor there, one of those lots was actually owned by the city. And according to the laws in the city, the property owner could get that at a discounted price. Right. And yeah. then the one across that was across the street, which was next to the other three uh, mm-hmm. properties, is owned privately. Now, I would actually be even be willing to pay that person a premium for that lot because you, you because you're going to be able to get so much more per spot from those same individuals living there. So yeah, I've made a lot of money. Um, so Jordan, just to give you some history on my side, I I've I bought Jordan lots. Let's then before you go ahead, I want to know what Jordan thinks about that. I, I mean, you you're in it, and that's that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, so I was um, was like. For the two lots that are there, depending on how many spaces we can get, see what the the profit uh, the profitability is on it, and then just like you spoke about before, being able to have that that private almost type of community, whether that either be an area for additional parking or that be a you know a, a private space, uh, you know, let's say before the rooftop decks are there, um, as as far as like a recreational or community space you know, and then be able to fully have yourself isolated. That is where I was thinking about being able to add some of that value, um, you know, so that people are, you know, much more attracted. But the parking, I was thinking, I was like, I got I to gotta figure something out. For yeah, I was figuring it because I, I actually went to the <laughs> plat maps, from the city plat maps. You, you could actually get three cars per each one of those lots. Nice. Okay. Not, not into and, and leaving enough room for to get in and out, right? Right, um, right. And then, so like I was saying, also with the travel nurses, because right, th- because uh, it's it's Maryland's right there. Um, getting the the city bikes, getting Ubers, and then walking are all viable options. So depending on what the ratio is, if I'm doing maybe about a third or you know four of them um, that are uh, you know two travel nurses. Like I said, just to, to buy the time, then I would actually have six spaces that were available for long term. Right. So, you know, it, it's a little bit of a, a you know, balancing game and, and problem solving on the fly, which, you know, that's that's what I, I you know, I have fun with it. That's what we do. Right. That's what we do. So uh, what, were, what were you saying? 
Yeah, Dan, I, I cut yeah. Dan off. I, 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 I was saying that my biggest profit margins have come from garages and 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 parking vacant mm. land that I've converted into parking lots. That eventually I hold on to it. And eventually, until the developer decides to buy from me at a, at a premium price, right? Because we always so it, we concentrate and is always buying right outside the sexiness. Mm. So those properties to me, is. yeah, those properties to me. I'm not going to kid you. I was excited about um, because I could <laughs> see the potential. I could see the the probability of appreciation over the next ten years. Um, it, it's just it, it was just a home run. It just and if I just didn't see the uh, and I still don't see it. Well, Jordan, got unless some you're doing it the way you're doing it, because you're you coming some. in with a total different uh, idea, yeah, and, yeah. and and I'm excited. I I actually want to watch you do it, man. Yeah, um, man. Maybe yeah, because it's it, we can get some footage. Yeah, because oh, it's going to yeah, be exciting sure. to watch yeah. you do this, man. Just just for the learning aspect, you don't think so, Chris or Chris Birch, Chris yeah. uh, Haskins? I do. Yeah. yeah, without yeah. a doubt. I mean, just just hearing hearing the conversation about the addition, potential additional parking, and I'm sure Jordan knows this, but just south of that property is Union Market. Well, Union Market during the daytime has two hour street parking. Where do you think all the vendors have to park? Mm -hmm. Parking spaces. And I, I know paid twenty just for lunch. I paid twenty six dollars for an hour right. and a half. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you exactly. know what? He was complaining about that. Chris, oh Chris uh, I go into the city, man. It's forty two dollars for an hour and a half. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. before, and that's before your taxes, right? Yeah, and that's before the tip. Actually. That's before the tip. So, because in the city yeah. that you actually have a parking attendant, um, they don't let you just you know go get your car. So, Unreal. you know, I, wow. I was kind of laughing when you were complaining about the twenty six dollars, but I understand because where you're coming from, right in Virginia, they don't have those. Ain't no parking right. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> parking but listen, what? Yeah, in the city, I gotta <laughs> tell you, man. Like I was driving around there. If I saw a garage, a two, or three, four, or five car garage, I'd buy that in a heartbeat. I don't oh, care yeah. if I pay a premium for it, man. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's in my opinion, it's the best investment you can make, man. It's it's very low, you know. Um, uh, customer service, you know, you clean mm. it, you paint it, put some electric LED light bulbs in there, you you put it so that it go off as soon as people leave, um, so it cuts down on your on your consumption, and you and you charge a premium price for it because people are willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. In city environments, you're not going to get away with that with with in, in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Empty forever. <laughs> All right, we have to seven five though, right? <laughs> <laughs> and join final thoughts i want to hear you know uh, what would you recommend any new people getting in the industry i guess this will be for everybody i would like to just get your opinion we'll go real quickly uh we've been on here for 50 something minutes jordan what would you well, give us a nugget for somebody that's new getting into the game what would you recommend since you're, you're giving us a perspective from the millennial aspect hey man do it Find some friends, find people to talk to, YouTube universe. Literally anybody that is is in the millennial, you know, my my generation, we literally have no excuse. There mm. is infinite knowledge that is available on the interwebs. Wow. You can figure anything out that you ever wanted to, and you cannot say that same thing 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yes, they had to go read a book. And that was the single source of knowledge that they probably would have been able to get to readily available. Wow. You can just at your fingertips, learn as much as you can and move, take action. It's, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta move in the, uh, it's not with the absence of fear because fear is going to be there. You have to move with knowing that it's going to be scary. It's going to be terrifying. Right. Jordan, is that a habit? Because I'm even looking at myself and I'm thanking God that now I have the habit of going through the internet, learning, going to plan, learn, go. Is that because I don't, I don't, I don't recall myself doing that years ago. I mean, I mean not, not even more recently. Mm. Um, I, I think you know, like I said, I'm, my background is engineering. Um, I really enjoy puzzles and solving problems. Um, and you know, for a lot of a lot of my life, like I said. I was I was everywhere by myself usually, you know, living in somebody else's state, you know, not having a lot of family or friends. So anything that would happen, I get broke down on the side of the road. Well, <laughs> you know, you gotta, you gotta figure it out. <laughs> you gotta figure it out real quick. You know, so um, 
you know, I, I think it is, it's, it's a little bit of a rush to it because I'm an adrenaline junkie. Um, you know, love, love snowboard and love riding motorcycles and stuff like that. So I think that for certain people, there is a certain risk tolerance that people have an aversion to. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for the rewards and the benefits of doing things like this, you know, I actually get to be able to help a lot of people, um, you know, and I can be I can put myself in somebody else's shoes where it's like, you know, <laughs> look, I don't I don't know a lot. I don't I don't know everything there is to know. Like you guys have been teaching me and, you know, just from this you know call right here, I'm I'm changing strategies i'm looking to you know increase and optimize um but you're never gonna know you're never gonna know what's going on you're never gonna be able to to plan and, and know exactly everything so you know for me it's like i'm probably gonna be scared to do it but you can't not you know because yeah. you're just gonna be in the same place that you were yesterday and if i got to the end of my life looking at that wow you know my thing is you leave it all on the field you, you're never gonna be you know, never going to be upset about, you know, putting all your effort in. So nice. nice. Birch, what are you going to give us our, our, my, my roundup viewers to see uh, for entrepreneur slash investor? Yeah. So <clears throat> unlike Dan or yourself, I'm considered fairly new to real estate, not new to business, but new to real estate in the last, you know, 10 years. But if too, I had, let me just I gotta say you're a hell of an entrepreneur. I mean you're you're no one I'm not that side, but I'm yeah. talking yeah. Right. Yeah. If, if, if I had the tools today, YouTube University, mm. you have you have wholesalers all over the country showing you how to do it. You have real estate investors like yourself and like Dan have YouTube channels promoting and sharing your experiences. If I had those like eight years ago, I can only imagine where I would be. So I guess the point being is it's out there. It's free. I'm not saying everything is correct, but vet the information, mm -hmm. learn from the people, try some, like, try some of their strategies. The first guy who ever, ever told me how to try real estate, he said, do one and learn how to do that one correctly. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're going to start listening to all these gurus saying, get into multifamily and get in a 50 unit and a hundred unit and all this other stuff. Just learn how to do it. You know, you're going to learn it quick. You could learn how to buy a piece of real estate, finance it, private money, however you do it, learn how to locate a tenant, vet a tenant, and then learn how to do that. You know, Chris Haskins, Dan Barrero, they're doing it for free on YouTube. I mean, take that information. It's, it's, it's free. free and you can learn from it. Like just do it. I don't think people realize that dude, 10 years ago. Anyway, I don't even want to go there. Yeah. Birch, thank you. Barrero, final thoughts, man. We'll get out of here. Final thoughts, man. Stop over analyzing the deal and just go do it. I mean, you could prepare. You know, I, I'm, and, and I'm a stickler for preparation, and I'll beat a dead horse as far as research is concerned to, to death, right? But at the end of the day, you got to, you know, take take the risk and get over the fear. You know, it's it's as Jordan said earlier, you know, there's there's never going to be a time you don't do the deal without having some fear. And that's OK. Everyone of them. Yeah, that's OK. Everyone of them. But what 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 reduces my fear factor is the research I did in like preparation mm -hmm. before I made the deal. Um, I look at every deal. Um, as to why I shouldn't do the deal rather than why I should. Talk and if it still makes sense, then I'll proceed with, with the continuous research. But at the end of the day, you stop over and analyze the deal. You know, whether you listen to Chris, or any one of us on, on any one of the four of us here that are willing to give out this free information or go to someone else, it's irrelevant. You know, get it. It's free. Just get out there and do the deal. You'll learn more by actually doing it than, than just listening to us. Yep. Um, Messing it up. Yeah, mess it up. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, this has been an honor, man. And just uh, round up. I hope you guys, I don't know how many years of experience you have here. Damn, probably like 100 years of. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred years. What I like that's, to do that's is. Just half of his day. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I love doing this, guys. Thank you so much for participating and let me participate in this as well. I want to come on do it. Uh, this is our recording, but I want to see if you guys would after this re this is released, if you could come on live and we can take some questions from the around the country. I'm sure it would just hey, blow. We'll be on there all afternoon, man. Right. 
<laughs> well, the holidays, I'm like, look, the holidays are coming, so let's see. What Jordan, man, when you're doing this work, man, please send us some photos, man. I, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you, to be honest with you. I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's the best part about this business is that when if, if you're successful, you don't begrudge someone else's success, right? Yeah. And if you see somebody's doing something different, you're like, Fair damn, moment. let me watch that. Yeah. And I get it. It's like, I love watching people do their craft, whether it's, whether it's they're, they're, they're masonry men or real carpenters. You know, mm -hmm. when you see guys that love doing what they do with their hands and they do it so exceptionally well and similar to what you're doing, Jordan, right? I I enjoy watching it, right? And at the same time, I'm learning, right? But again, please please keep us informed, man. I'm gonna I'm yeah. I'm gonna I, I look forward to your success in this project. Thanks, yeah, thanks, appreciate it, man.